Hi guys, welcome to this quick recap looking at how you can work out the charge for any iron. Okay, to be able to work out the charge for any iron for any element in the periodic table, the first thing you need to be able to do is look at the groups. So I'm going to start off with groups 1 to 7. Now as we can see here, you should be able to remember the group number tells you the, num the number of electrons in the outer shell. So group 1 has 1 electron in the outer shell, group 2 has 2 in the outer shell, group 3 has 3, group 4 has 4, and so on all the way up to group 7. This also tells you the number of electrons that an atom wants to either lose or gain. So because lithium or group 1 has 1 in the outer shell, it's easier to lose 1 electron than it is to gain 7. Group 2, it's easier to lose 2 electrons than it is to gain 6. Group 3, easier to lose 3 than gain 5. Group 4, either could happen, so it could lose 4 or it could gain 4. Group 5 has 5 in the outer shell, so it's easier to gain 3 electrons than it is to lose 5. Group 6, it's easier to gain 2 electrons than to lose 6. And group 7, it's easier to gain 1 than to lose 1. So once you know whether an element wants to lose or gain, and how many, the next thing to remember is that the charge for everything that loses becomes positive and everything that gains becomes negative. And then the charge is just how many it loses or gains. So group 1 loses 1 becomes plus 1. Group 2 loses 2 becomes 2 plus. Group 3 loses 3 becomes 3 plus. Group 4, if it loses, becomes 4 plus. And then if it gains electrons, it becomes negative. So if it gains four electrons, it becomes four minus. If it gains three electrons, three minus. Gains two electrons, two minus. Gains one electron, one minus. So you can look at any element, for example, magnesium, which is in group two. Therefore, it's always going to be two plus. If you had sulfur, it's in group six. It's always going to be two minus and so on. Now there are a few polyatomic compound ions, ones that you just have to remember. They are hydroxide, which is OH-, hydrogen, which is H+, carbonate, which is CO3-. Remember that 3 down at the bottom is not part of the charge, the charge is the 2-. minus. Nitrate, which is NO3-, minus. again it's a minus 1 charge, that 3 is not part of the charge. And sulfate, which is SO4-. minus. Again, the 2 minus is the charge. The third little bit on the ionic charge recap is your transition metals. Now, you can't work out the charge of a transition metal just from looking at the periodic table. But a lot of times, they'll give you the information in the question. So if they tell you you've got copper 2 sulfate, that 2 tells you the charge. You know now that all metals are positive, so it would be copper Cu2+. If you had iron 3 oxide, again that 3 tells you it becomes Fe3+. You can also work out the charge even if it doesn't give you that. So if it gives you the formula, let's say for iron oxide here of Fe2O3, you know oxygen is in group 6, therefore you know it is 2 minus. The formula tells me we've got 3 oxygens, so that's 3 lots of O2 minus, giving me an overall negative charge of 6 minus. Therefore, my positive charge must be 6 plus because they cancel each other out. Now I know I've got two ions, therefore two of my ions make 6 plus. So what does one ion make? It's going to be 3 plus. 6 plus divided by 2 gives me 3 plus, so my charge for my ion here is 3 plus. So you can always use the formula to work out the charges. If I look at another example, nickel chloride, Chlorine's in group 7, therefore I know my charge is minus 1. I've got 2 of them, therefore my total charge is 2 minus. Therefore my 1 nickel has got to be 2 plus. There's only one of them, so it's Ni2 plus. Right, let's see how much you've picked up. So I've got 6 questions for you, which is work out the charge for the following ions. So there are 6 to do. Calcium, chloride, iron 3, nitrogen, hydroxide, and sulfate. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a while. Okay, let's go through. So if we start off with calcium then, if 
you look on your periodic table, you should realize it's in group two. Therefore, it wants to lose two electrons. So my charge is going to be Ca2. The next thing you need to remember is that all metals form positive ions, positive cations, so you're gonna have Ca2+. So you get one mark for that. Chloride, that's in group seven. If it's in group seven, it wants to gain one electron. Chlorine, non-metal, always negative, so you have Cl minus. In three, you've got this three here. That tells you your charge. You can't work it out from the periodic table. So it tells you it's Fe3. Again, all metals are positive, so Fe3 plus. Nitrogen is in group five. If it's in group five, it wants to gain three electrons. If it gains three electrons, it's a non-metal, so it becomes N3 minus. Hydroxide, you just need to remember, that's OH minus, and your sulfate, you also need to remember SO4 2 minus. Just be careful with this one, you should remember that 4 goes down below and that 2 minus goes up above. If you got that wrong, you would lose the mark in the exam. And that really is all there is to it. I have got a review question for you, which is work out the charge for the following ions. So it's exactly the same task, just with some different ions. And that brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.